be a bright spot. You never know when a smile, compliment, or kind word can change a person's day. Good afternoon and welcome to Bright Spot, a virtual discussion bringing you a dose of inspiration while normalizing conversations about mental health and substance use disorders. The show is presented by CNS Healthcare. My name is Kara Johnson. I'm your guest host in today for Nancy Gandalo. We want everyone to know your mental health matters and it's okay to not be okay. Today's guest joining us is Laura Lefevre, president of NAMI Michigan's Detroit chapter, and also the director of community projects at the Children's Center. We will be talking about the different supports that NAMI Detroit offers the community, and then also talk about Laura's role at the Children's Center and what they do to support the community. Laura, please tell us a little bit about yourself and let's dive right in. Well, I just want to say hi, Cara. Hi, Ali. Thank you both for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I'm just really glad to be here. Uh, so as you said, my name is Laura Lefevre, um, president of the Detroit chapter of NAMI Michigan, uh, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, if, if folks aren't familiar who are listening in. Um, we're really a grassroots organization, believe it or not, that has NAMI as a whole has been around since 1979 and still picking up momentum to get the name out in the community for um, individuals and families to know the work that we do. Um, and people will say, well, what do you do um, with NAMI? And so, so NAMI's role really is to uplift our families individuals, children, bring awareness um, around everything, mental health, substance abuse, uplift and, and provide a framework where families, individuals can know that there are safe spaces to have these conversations, provide resources, trainings, right, uh, on how to have the conversations around mental health. So it, it's all of that. And that's just, that's a real quick overview. No, that was a great overview. Thank you so much for that. Uh, diving a little bit more into yeah. NAMI Detroit. Um, so what you are right now, the president of the NAMI Detroit chapter. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about how NAMI Detroit differs from the statewide affiliate and then what you do in your role as president? Yeah, yeah. So there's NAMI National, right? Because NAMI is, is everywhere. And I think we're, I want to say in all 50 states, but I may be remiss. And there may be a, a, one or two states we're not in yet. So forgive me for, don't want to provide misinformation, but I don't want to oversell either. So you have NAMI National. And then of course we have NAMI Michigan, which Kevin Fisher is the executive director and a really wonderful person if you've ever had the chance to meet him. So with NAMI Michigan throughout the different counties, there are affiliates because in this work, no one group, so to speak, can do all of the work. Uh, when we're talking about mental health, uh, that affects everything everyone at some point in time in their life, right? Or in every community, yeah. every state. So there are affiliates uh, throughout the state. Detroit, NAMI Detroit happens to be one, and we're very proud of that. Um, there are other NAMI affiliates throughout Michigan. You have uh, NAMI Washtenaw, Genesee County, and NAMI Metro. And so Detroit, for us, we're able to service the Detroit community. That is our focus areas to, again, as I said before, uplift, provide those resources around mental health, have those conversations and presentations to our community of Detroit. Affiliates really like to dig in and know the needs of the community. You know, mental health can touch us all in some way, either directly or indirectly, but there may be different needs in different communities. And so we really in Detroit want to get to know our neighbors, our families, the different organizations, and really meet the needs of the community within Detroit. But that's not that doesn't say we're going to turn anyone away, right? If someone comes knocking and they are from NAMI, Florida, they're more than welcome. But we like to hone in and, and partner with the Detroit community. Can you tell us a little bit about what those specific supports are or what sort of presentations are available? Um, some examples of, of what you do to uplift the community. Yeah, yeah. so um, I talked about partnerships. So what NAMI Detroit doesn't do, we're not a direct provider of services. So you have organizations such as CNS, 
the development center, the children's center, those are providers of direct services to Trade Recovery Project. They provide that direct service. We are a partner to those community organizations where if someone is looking for supports, we're able to help guide them that way. We also provide um, resources to families. We have public meetings monthly where we talk about NAMI, but we really have monthly presentations to help share and uplift the work that's going on in the community. And so just uh, recently, matter of fact, we partnered with Wayne State University, the psychology department, and hosted an event for the undergrads and some graduate students, right, in terms of careers and mental health. So one of the big things right now is that the workforce is changing in mental health. And so how can NAMI help advocate support for um, around the workforce? So we did just that with the psychology department and sponsored an event again for those students on campus who are interested in various careers in mental health. So we do things of that nature. We have our family support group that runs a monthly where families can come and meet with other families and know that they're not alone and have a safe space for conversations. And um, so those are, those are a few things that we do. And, and really important ones too. I know that the family support alone Many people who are relatives of those that have mental health diagnoses or substance use disorders feel like they don't really have a place that, you know, they maybe don't need to be in therapy. Uh, although personally, I think everybody could benefit from therapy. Everybody. Yes, <laughs> yes Cara, yes, at yep. some point to everybody. Yeah. But just, just having that community of other people who understand exactly what they're going through is huge. So thank you for, for all you do for that. No worries. It's, it really, it takes all of us to have, to be willing to have the conversation. And what's really exciting is that as we have younger, younger people coming in, they're more willing to have the conversation around mental health, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to generalize or divide generations, but it's it's true. There's been this stigma, this long-standing stigma that should talk about that. And then, but we have our younger millennials and our Gen Zs who are saying, no, we want to have a conversation. So we applaud that. And it is making it easier to really talk about all the work of mental health and substance abuse as just not this thing that's taboo and shall be spoken to behind closed doors. Yep, that stigma is absolutely something um, we see and, and try to fight against at CNS Healthcare as well. And yes. I'm, I'm glad you're also seeing that with the generations, it seems like there's changes in the attitude. It's very refreshing. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, if community members are, are hearing about you for the first time and they're like, okay, this this really sounds like something that I could benefit from or that I want to share with somebody else, what's the best way for somebody to get in contact with NAMI Detroit or to, to find out about one of those family support groups? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really great question. So there's a couple of ways. You can follow us on Facebook, right? There's social media aspects, Facebook and Instagram. And if you just plug in NAMI Detroit, we're there. Our website is NAMI Detroit. You can Google us or just really send us an email at NAMI Detroit at gmail.com. Just send us a simple email. We work to answer those as often as we can, several times throughout the week, right? Um, and we always have individuals who want to know how they can join. And you can go on any of the websites if you go on NAMI Michigan, talks about joining. And you follow the process and you select NAMI Detroit as your affiliate. Same thing with our website. And the great thing about NAMI, there is a membership fee, but it's as low as $5. So think about one last Starbucks, one last, I won't say movie ticket, because movie tickets are more than $5 these days. But if you think about one less Starbucks, right, um, for, for a membership for a year, you can join us. And that allows just a plethora of information, the NAMI uh, Michigan newsletter and, and other things and other opportunities and events. So yeah, for $5, you can join us, you can hang out with us, you can hang out with us at any time at 
our public events. Uh, come to the NAMI Walk that's traditionally in September of every year. It is such a great time. Kevin Fisher does a phenomenal job with the walk this year. It was on Wayne State's campus. It was so great. So yeah, those are different spaces that you can follow us, get more information, find out when our support groups are happening, find out how to become involved because we're always recruiting new members because we are looking to expand our training. And that is something that NAMI Detroit does We, with our membership is to help engage others and actually cover the cost of the training. We just ask for your commitment in return and share this throughout the community. So we would love to have an army of trainers to be able to support the Detroit community. Yeah, that resource for five dollars, that's that's not a value you're going to get anywhere else. So exactly. <laughs> Movie tickets are more than that. Yeah. <laughs> you touched on events a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. are there any other events coming up that NAMI Michigan or NAMI Detroit is taking part in or putting on that community members could attend? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I was sharing there's the, the monthly NAMI Detroit public meetings, public presentations, and all of that you can find um, on Instagram and Facebook. But something that's coming up that's really great that NAMI Michigan is hosting is the annual NAMI Honors event. That is April the 15th, it's a Saturday at the Henry. You always call it the Henry Ford, the Henry, which I love, <laughs> starts at six o'clock. And it is a black tie event. And what's so great about this event NAMI honors is that it pays tribute to clinicians, parent support partners, youth peer services, psychiatrists, different affiliates, those that are doing the work, those that are volunteering. So it's volunteers and professionals really being honored for the work that they're doing. There's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer support that's going on. So you'll see wonderful groups of uh, peer-led, you know, peer-led groups who are there in their black ties and just being recognized, right, for the work. And so, yeah, NAMI Honors is a wonderful event every year. And so, again, that's April the 15th. And that information can be found on the NAMI Michigan website. I've had uh, the privilege of going to NAMI Honors a few years now, and I agree with everything you said, Laura. It's, it's huge just to see everyone in mental health, everyone that understands the importance that mental health plays in absolutely everybody's life and every interaction from law enforcement to right. public officials. Mm -hmm. It's 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 just really cool to see them get their moments that we recognize and see everything they're doing and the value that it has. Yeah, and it's so important because, you know, doing this work within the work that the providers do no one's exempt from mental illness, right? And mm -hmm. so um, oftentimes you'll hear of individuals with secondary trauma. That happens also too with the individuals that do this work. So this is just a great way to really recognize them. As you said, and last year the Detroit Youth Choir was there. That was phenomenal. They so brought down the house. Absolutely. Brought it down, <laughs> brought it down, and everyone had a great time. <laughs> If you're just joining us, this is Bright Spot, your community connection to wellness presented by CNS Healthcare. Today, we're speaking to Laura Lefevre, president of NAMI Detroit. Laura, I wanna talk a little bit more about NAMI Detroit and then switch gears a little bit to your day job over at the sure. Children's Center. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, one thing that CNS is very passionate about, and I know NAMI is as well, is ending stigma about, as you said earlier, talking about mental health conditions, yeah. substance use disorders, seeking treatment. And NAMI Detroit has a, a cool program that I hope you can talk to us a little bit about. So what is Stigma Free 313 and how can the community get involved? Oh, that's, that's a good question. So Stigma Three, Stigma 313 is really our tagline that we, that actually uh, my, my whole board member and prior president Paris Simpson came up with along with the board and it goes back to that vision of how are we supporting the Detroit area? What are we, what are we going to do? How are we standing up for the individuals and families and, and just everyone in Detroit? And again, that's our, our focus area. 
And so, you know, we said, hey, we're the kind of 313. We play, you know, it's the stigma free 313. It's really just what it is. Let's eliminate the stigma around mental health. I think that, um, and as you talk to members of NAMI, the more that we have the ability to have the conversations around mental health at the dinner table, on the ride home with your kiddos, when you check in with them, with an elderly person, just with a friend who something seems out of sorts, let me check in. Really normalizing the conversations, making it a part of your day to day, make it a part of check ins with those individuals in the 313. And so that's that's the that's our tagline. That's the kind of kicker that really get folks motivated to have the conversations. I love that. I love stigma free. 313. It does. Just yeah. just rolls off your tongue. <laughs> we can eliminate, we can get everyone in the in Detroit area just having the conversations and just let it be natural. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. oh. Absolutely. So thank you for what you're doing with, with NAMI Detroit. I'm sure that's that's a lot of hours that, that you're putting in there and your blood, sweat, and tears there. The whole um, team. All right. <laughs> I, I have to say that yeah. I have a fun I work with a phenomenal group of individuals and so I just want to shout everyone out on the yes, NAMI please. board and the volunteers because it is not one person it is I am surrounded by such great individuals and it's a composition of of it's a collect it's a diverse group of people who come to the table who may have a family member who is traveling their mental health journey they could be a professional they could just be someone who's interested in the 313, right? Interested in NAMI, interested in the Detroit, uh, Detroit area, and interested in having and helping uplift the framework of NAMI and mental health. Absolutely. A great team over there. Mm -hmm. uh, now for the rest of your hours or many of your other hours, many, your day job, of can you tell us a little bit about uh, what the Children's Center is, uh, who they serve, and then what you do as the Director of Community Projects? Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking. So my professional home of 27 years, if I, I sometimes I say that and it's hard to believe, but I've been with the Children's Center for 27 years. We're located um, kind of in Midtown. I still call it the Cass Border for anyone who remembers. Um, way back when, uh, we are a specialized children's service provider. We service children and families pre-birth to 21, 22, everything that falls in that behavioral health spectrum. So children with serious emotional disturbances, children who are uh, on the, uh, have some cognitive disabilities, uh, uh, developmental disabilities, as well as a provider of child welfare services. We are a foster care uh, adoption and licensing purchases service organization for the state of Michigan. And so everything in between. So we have a wonderful group of bachelor level and master level clinicians who provide just a variety of evidence-based, evidence-informed therapies to children. They're our primary client and families because you can't serve as a child without the families. And then in between that, I, I, I want to share, or not in between, but a part of the work, our families come to us for their for their mental health journeys with their child, right? To help learn and understand the diagnosis. And, and we, again, work with them during different therapeutic models to provide the best uh, outcomes for, driven by families. But there are times where our families may need some extra support. And so one of the areas under my purview is our Family Success Center. And that is a, it, it's a resource center for families. So when you're on campus and you're, you're finished with your, your therapeutic meeting, you come down to the Family Success Center and we do everything from basic needs supports to parent workshops, youth wellness workshops, art therapies, and again, everything in between. So that's, and, and there's a lot of other things that go into to my, my, the role that I have at the Children's Center. I have the opportunity to work with other organizations like NAMI, CNS, others um, to help collaborate 
on services, whether it be with the school, whether it's with the schools or a church, community action agencies, bringing those resources to the Children's Center, looking at collaborative relationships, because it really is about making sure we service the whole child. So that's kind of what Laura's regular <laughs> her, her day is like. And there's much more packed in there, I'm sure everyone can imagine. Oh, but um, but as an agency, that is our focus is to um, to help service those families. We do uh, screen and eligibility assessments um, for services. Yeah, for our children and families. Yeah, yeah. On 27 years there, congratulations on that. That says a lot about you and the organization and it's it's great to hear you talk about the Children's Center and, and feel that the pride and the services you provide for the community. So thank you for, for coming on and sharing that with all of our audience and maybe those that aren't familiar with the work of the Children's Center. So now no, you know if you didn't and, before. And now you know. And Nokar, I appreciate that. And families can find us at thechildrencenter.com. They can find us on social social media as well. And, and then I do want to share, and this is the shameless plug. I was talking to Car earlier and saying, you know, I also do a podcast, believe it or not. Um, I love this podcast world. I was saying to Car, it's, to you, Car, it's like weird to be on the other side, right? <laughs> um, but it's real talk about children's mental health, and you can find that, as they say, anywhere you get your <laughs> listening to your podcast, or you can. <laughs> Find, find the podcast on the Children's Center website. And it's it's a conversation just like this card. It's, it's really great. It's conversations about services, access to services, things that are going on. Um, and, it, you know, it could be a conversation on diagnosis. It could be a conversation around the Family Success Center. Or it could be a conversation just around the education and what families need for their kiddos. So I welcome um, your listeners to, to take a listen. Not not a shameless plug at all. That's that's exactly <laughs> what what we're hoping that that you could share. It's it's another great resource and maybe tool in the toolbox for another. families in, in Detroit, but also all over. I do love the way podcasts and virtual shows can connect us that way. Yeah, I love it. It is it. Is, this is a space uh, that's not defined by boundaries, right? It, uh, it really is a space for everyone. And, and again, you know, going back with what we do with NAMI, it is getting that information and resources out to the collective, to the community as a whole. Absolutely. Now we're, I'm gonna wrap up a minute, but we know yeah. post COVID, pre COVID all the time, uh, things can just be difficult out yeah. there for everyone. Mm -hmm. If you seem mm -hmm. like you have it together, if you don't, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Everybody's trying to We're all trying. make We're it all work trying to and do it what out. they can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So knowing that, is is there anything else that, that you'd like to share with our audience? Some some words of inspiration or hope or what, what gets you through when, when you're feeling down? I'm looking at the state of the world. Wow, you, that's that's a huge question. You know, what what gets me, what helps keep me motivated um, professionally, the families? The children, the youth that we work with, very resilient. Someone says, why do children have to be resilient? And that's a tough one, but they are. And, you know, watching them navigate and, and helping, you know, being a part of that and seeing how resilient they can be and knowing that the individuals we work with, they, they have, they're just, they're resilient, they are knowledgeable, and, and sometimes we hit these roadblocks where we just need to come together and have someone or somebody help support and uplift and help them navigate. NAMI, NAMI, um, the NAMI family really is, is it's, it's a bright spot anytime I do work for NAMI, anytime I have a conversation about NAMI, um, when I'm feeling down right before this phone call, one of my NAMI colleagues called me so we can get together this weekend and have a conversation. Those are the things that keep me going is knowing that there's a community of individuals that I can reach out to. If I'm having a tough day or if I'm having a tough time that it's a shared space, it's a safe space. Sometimes it's just a space where either they can talk or I can talk and no one else has to say a word. Um, so that's what keeps me going. Thank you, Laura. I really appreciate you being on and sharing those words with us as well. 
And thank you to our audience for joining us today for Bright Spot, CNS Healthcare's virtual show. We hope you'll mark your calendars and continue to join us the second Monday of every month at 12 to discuss feelings, struggles, and finding one's way, something we're all still trying to figure out. If there's a topic you want to hear discussed, please drop it in the chat or comment on this video. For the next month, remember to be a bright spot. You never know when a smile, a compliment, or a kind word can change a person's day. Have a great week.